Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we are investigating claims that the RTX 2060 is a bad buy due to the fact that it only has a 6GB VRAM capacity. The 2060 typically offers around GTX 1070 Ti like performance, but whereas the 1070 Ti and even the non-Ti model pack an 8GB memory buffer, the 2060 gets just 6GB. So that means this is the fastest graphics card to ever come with just a 6GB memory buffer. The previous king of that title would have been the GeForce GTX 980 Ti, and as far as I know, the Maxwell flagship part has aged very well. So at least up until this point, the 6GB capacity hasn't been an issue. The 2060 is only around 15% faster on average when compared to the GTX 980 Ti. So while a lot of people are freaking out, or at least a lot of people who comment on our videos, I don't believe the 6GB VRAM buffer is really going to be an issue, at least in the short term. That said, I did want to run a few more tests, so here we are. The first thing I wanted to do was report the peak VRAM allocation at 1440p in all the games we currently use to test GPU performance. There's 37 games in total, so this portion of the testing alone took more than a day, and I have to admit, watching VRAM allocation while playing around in these games for up to 10 minutes at a time, that wasn't the most enjoyable experience. Before we look at memory usage, it's important to note that we're really looking at allocation and not necessarily usage. Memory allocation sees memory reserved for storing data required by the GPU, and some of that data allows the GPU to perform various calculations. Often games allocate more VRAM than is required, as having the memory reserved ahead of time can improve performance. A recent example of this was seen when testing with Resident Evil 2. We often saw VRAM allocation go as high as 8.5GB when testing the RTX 2080 Ti at 4K, but there was no performance penalty when using a graphics card with only 6GB of VRAM. There was, however, a big performance penalty for using graphics cards with less than 6GB of VRAM. So while the game would allocate around 8GB of VRAM when available at the 4K resolution, it appears to be using somewhere between 4 and 6GB of memory, probably much closer to 6GB. Anyway, here's a look at the 37 games we currently test with, and here you can see how memory allocation differs between the RTX 2060 and 2070. The 2070, of course, having a larger 8GB memory buffer will allow for a greater amount of memory to be allocated if need be. Starting from the top, we find our most memory intensive titles, Quake Champions, is a surprisingly hungry title, though truth be told, this game seems to just allocate all the available memory. I estimate usage is actually below 4GB, purely based on what we've seen when testing. Rise of the Tomb Raider is another hungry title, but usage for this one is probably closer to the allocation figure, and we've already discussed Resident Evil 2, and I suspect Shadow of the Tomb Raider is very similar to Rise of the Tomb Raider. Beyond that though, allocation does drop below 6GB. We see 10 titles where allocation is between 5 and 5.5GB, and with everything else allocating 4GB or less. Now it's worth noting that almost all of these titles were tested using the maximum quality preset with some form of anti-aliasing enabled. That being the case, it's very easy to tweak the visual settings in most of these games to reduce memory usage without noticeably impacting the visual quality, and I'll explore that a bit more in a moment. Moving on, I've seen quite a few people now argue that Turing's improved memory compression makes all the difference when compared to Pascal. So they're saying the 6GB 2060's memory buffer uh, is technically larger than that of the GTX 1060s. This really isn't a valid argument for a few reasons, one being that the 2060 is over 50% faster than the 1060 and therefore will be expected to handle drastically higher visual quality settings and resolutions. So I doubt any compression improvements are substantial enough to make up for that. That said, I was interested to see how this impacted memory allocation, so once again I loaded up all 37 games, this time using the GTX 1060 6GB to see what we hit for the peak allocation. Typically memory allocation was higher with the GTX 1060, there were a few titles where it was half a gigabyte higher, but for the most part we were only looking at 100 to 200 megabytes. Interestingly, in Warframe, allocation was lower with the GTX 1060. I did reload the game a few times, but received the same results each time. So yes, memory management for Turing GPUs is better, it's just not that much better. Okay, so we've looked at memory allocation in a huge amount of games now. I think it's about time we check out some performance numbers. For this, I will be comparing the RTX 2060 and 2070 in four of the uh, more heavily memory 
allocated titles, I suppose. So the four most heavily memory allocated titles that we came across were uh, Quake Champions, Resident Evil 2, and the Tomb Raiders. So I want to see how they scale from 1440p to 4K, and then see if the 2060 is suffering from a lack of VRAM. If it is, the margin should obviously increase as we increase the resolution, and in particular the frame time performance, that should really take a nosedive. First up we have Quake Champions, and looking at the 1440p results, we see that the RTX 2060 is just 7% slower than the 2070 when comparing the average frame rate, and just 5% slower for the 0.1% low result. Increasing the resolution, we see that the 2060 is 9% slower for the average frame rate and 8% slower for the 0.1% low frame time result. So yes, the margins did grow at 4K, but nowhere near big enough to claim a VRAM issue for the RTX 2060. It's far more likely that this increases down to the higher core count GPU, just being better utilized and less bottlenecked at the higher resolution. Moving on to Rise of the Tomb Raider, and here we see the 2060 trailing by just a 4% margin at 1440p for the average frame rate and 0.1% low result. These margins are increased to 13% and 11% at 4K. Again, you could quite easily just blame this on the 2060 6GB memory buffer, but I would advise against that. The 2060 packs 17% fewer CUDA cores and therefore should be anywhere from 10 to 17% slower than the 2070. This means we're probably running into some kind of system bottleneck at 1440p that's limiting performance of the 2070. In any case, the RTX 2060 was just as smooth as the 2070 at both resolutions. Of course, frame rates weren't ideal for either GPU at 4K, but they did offer a similar experience. Next up we have the newer Tomb Raider game, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and this is a fantastic looking title. At 1440p, the 2060 was 11% slower for the average frame rate and 0.1% low. Moving to 4K, we see the average frame rate margin increased to 16%, but the 0.1% low reduced to just 7%. Again, no memory capacity issues here. Frame time performance for the 2060 was excellent. And again, it has 17% fewer CUDA cores, so a 16% deficit in a heavily GPU bound scenario makes sense. If you saw my recent 57 GPU Resident Evil 2 benchmark, then you will have seen these results, but for those of you who haven't, let's quickly go over them. So, at 1440p, the 2060 was 11% slower for the average frame rate and 10% slower for the 0.1% low result. Those margins change ever so slightly at 4K, the 2060 is now 13% slower for the average frame rate, but just 8% slower for the 0.1% low result. Again, no evidence of running out of VRAM here for the RTX 2060. Okay, so it seems pretty clear that right now, even for 4K gaming, 6 gigabytes of VRAM really is enough. Of course, the RTX 2060 isn't really powerful enough to game at 4K, at least using maximum quality settings, but that's not really the point of this video. Now, I can already hear guys screaming at me that the issue isn't about gaming today, it's about gaming tomorrow. Like, much later tomorrow. I believe the argument is something like, yeah, the 2060 is okay now, but for future games, it just won't have enough VRAM. And while I don't have a functioning crystal ball, I know this is going to be both true and not so true. At some point, games are absolutely going to require more than six gigabytes of VRAM for maximum quality settings. The question is, by the time that happens, will the RTX 2060 be powerful enough to provide playable performance using those quality settings? It's almost certainly not going to be an issue this year. Uh, I doubt it'll be a real problem next year. In three years time, maybe you might have to start managing some quality settings then. Four years, probably, probably start to become a problem. And I'd say in five years time, it will almost certainly be a problem. We can look at AMD's Fiji GPUs as an example of aging poorly due to limited VRAM. The Fury series was released back in mid-2015 with just 4GB of HBM memory. The Fury X was to compete with the GTX 980 Ti, and the GeForce GPU packed a slower but larger 6GB buffer. Just three years later, the Fury X was struggling to keep up with the 980 Ti and modern tiles at 1440p using high quality textures. We recently saw the Fury X struggling in Resident Evil 2, so much so that it was slower than even the RX 580, and the experience wasn't even comparable, whereas the RX 580 with its 8GB VRAM buffer offered silky smooth gameplay, the Fury X was a stuttery mess. 
That said, while the Fury X can't handle Resident Evil 2 with the max preset enabled, you can manage the quality settings for smooth performance. Dropping the quality preset from max to graphics priority reduced the memory allocation from 7GB at 1440p, and this was enough to revive the Fury X. Honestly, image quality really wasn't that different. It certainly wasn't noticeable, but what was, was the gaming experience using the Fury X. Whereas the RTX 2060 only sees a 17% boost to the average frame rate, the Fury X sees a massive 40% performance increase. However, it's the frame time performance that's massively improved here. We see a 97% increase for the 1% low and 61% for the 0.1% low. And most crucially, the frequent stuttering is now gone. In fact, I didn't notice any stuttering at all. So whereas the Fury X was 27% slower than the RTX 2060 using the max preset, and basically unplayable due to stuttering, with the slightly lower graphics priority preset enabled, the Fury X was just 14% slower and offers a similar experience in terms of smoothness. Anyway, as it stands right now, the GeForce RTX 2060 has enough VRAM to power through today's games using the maximum quality settings. And as a GPU targeting 1440p gaming, or maybe extreme high refresh rate gaming at 1080p, it does fit the bill nicely, at least in terms of performance. I think we can all agree that eight gigabytes of GDDR6 memory would have been better. And those buying an RTX 2060 second hand in two or three years time uh, would certainly benefit from having that extra VRAM. But for those buying one of these right now, I don't think it really makes much difference. Doesn't seem to be an issue right now, as we just saw from all the testing and I think people are uh, sort of beating this up to be a much bigger issue than it is for the RTX 2060. I also doubt you'll run into much trouble over the next few years. And of course, if you do, it is very easy to solve. It's not like having not enough cores on a CPU. You can't really do much about that. In games like Battlefield 5, it's going to stutter and you're going to have issues if you don't have enough cores. There isn't a setting you can reduce that takes the load off having not enough cores. At least not enough anyway, getting sidetracked. Still, I will be keen to see how the RTX 2060 travels over the next few years. Uh, I'll certainly be closely monitoring its performance against the RTX 2070 and Vega 56. For now though, that is going to do it for this one. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button for us. That is much appreciated. Subscribe for more content. And if you appreciate the work we do at Hiram Box, then consider supporting us on Patreon. You will gain access to our Discord chat and monthly live streams. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve. And I'll see you again next time. Oh, 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 oh nearly knocked the desk over. <laughs>